Hi, I'm Mike, and uh, welcome to Our Wyoming Life. Do, 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 do. This just in, disaster strikes the ranch as Aaron's high tunnel implodes. We head out to the field to check out with our in-the-field reporter. Aaron, how's it going out there? Actually, it doesn't work. But that would be very cool if we could do that, wouldn't it, though? <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to be able to do that. I thought it would be cool. But... Yeah. Hey, guys, how are Hi. you this evening? We're going to pull up the chat here so we can see what's going on. Where is Erin? Where is Erin? People getting mad at me. I was sitting on the couch. She was. She wasn't out at the high tunnel. Sorry. Right. It would be cool, though, if we could go, like, if wow. we could switch cameras and go to, like, the tunnel cam and then go to the calf cam and then maybe, like, the Bambi cam or the barn cam or something like that. That would be cool. Um, good evening. This is Erin. This is our Hi. Wyoming life. I'm Mike. Uh, thanks for coming and hanging out with us today. It has been... Uh, a crazy couple of days, actually. Yeah. The uh, the high tunnel uh, imploded yesterday. Actually, we had uh, winds that hit what? They weren't that high. We didn't it really wasn't have that high. massive. I think the high wind yesterday was like forty eight. Um, that high tunnel, though, up until this point, has sustained winds up to seventy miles per hour. But a lot of it comes down to which direction the wind is coming from. Correct. Yeah. So the plastic had did have quite a bit of damage and we knew that and the plan was always to replace the plastic this coming fall like get through the spring replace the plastic um and i had been out and the way you fix plastic on a greenhouse or a high tunnels you tape it and so on wednesday it's technical like that. yeah you tape it so i've been i'd been taping it and like we knew wind was coming and we thought we got it all straightened out and good to go and um the main thing that was happening yesterday i have a hair Probably cat hair. Um, <laughs> Where are the cats, by the way? I put them away oh, right sweet. before this. I'm glad you were thinking. Um, so the main thing that was happening yesterday is the wind kept like shifting directions. So the plastic, if it comes out of just one solid direction, it balloons and it it will ride out the wind a lot better. When it shifts directions, then it like snaps. Mm -hmm. um, so it'll lift up on one end and you'll get this like wave effect and then it'll snap at the very end. And that's what it was doing yesterday. And the tape did not hold. No, it uh, sure. once it started to come loose, Aaron was actually in town. You were taking Grace to school, school, weren't you? Yeah, I just Grace had kindergarten screening and then preschool, and yeah, I was on my way home, and my mom called and she said, "I called Mike. I can't get a hold of him. You have plastic coming apart." Right. And then you did answer. When you called me, yeah. And it was too late. It was too late. It was <laughs> even if I could have gotten a hold of it, it would have literally lifted me off the ground. We had. Um, one situation, this was last year, was it? When, uh, we had some, t we that had was two years ago, two years ago, we had some plastic that was ripping and I went out to try to fix it. And I had to take off some of the wiggle wire, which is what actually holds the plastic on. The wind caught it and actually lifted me up off the ground. And I had my feet wrapped around, uh, one of the support posts holding onto this plastic. And I really wasn't sure. I think I called you while I was hanging yeah, there and I was like, I, was I don't know town. what to do. I'm always in town, it seems like, when the plastic breaks, but we did get that fixed. Um, so we knew the plastic was bad. Um, I mean, we really had, you know, not to say that we're out of the, if we made it another few weeks, we probably would have been through the worst of the, like, winter wind and storms. Um, that didn't happen. So we did, we're just doing low coverings right now, um, although right now there's nothing on it because the wind is blowing horribly all day. I did just check and it went down so we can go put plastic over the, the low cover hoops that I have in there and we'll weight everything down and landscape staple it in. And hopefully we can make it through. Right. Um, and we have a video coming up for you, uh, you know, how it all went down and what happened and what we did to handle that. And we're going to share that with you here in just a little bit. Uh, $5 um, super chat there from uh, Langford Lad, who is from Longford. Ireland. Longford. Longford Lad, sorry. Uh, who is from <laughs> Ireland, which is very cool. How do you know he's from Ireland? Because he said it earlier and I was paying attention. Oh. <laughs> what were you doing? Uh, I was you were sitting, sitting over there. The couch, yeah, out of you the couldn't frame. see anything. Fine. Yeah. Uh, the NASA shirt. I actually wore this shirt um, during hanging last year in a video, and then I got a comment not too long ago. Somebody sent me an email, and they said, "You're not going to. How can we wear, never wear the NASA shirt anymore?" Turns out they worked at NASA oh. and watched our channel, and uh, they asked me why I never wore the NASA shirt anymore. So I decided to wear it today. Because you wear a black sweatshirt every day in the winter. I do. It works out better that way. <laughs> thank you for the super chat, though. Yes, thank you very much. Um, let's answer a couple questions. Uh, coming up tonight, uh, we don't have any trivia tonight because I was not prepared enough uh, to do that. Uh, but we have we, a ton of mail. We do have a ton of mail time that came in uh, over the last couple weeks, and we're going to share that with you. 
Uh, we are going to share Aaron's high tunnel experience with you and that implosion that happened over there. It was, was it like explosion? explosion. <laughs> implosion. It was a mess is what it was. Uh, and how we dealt with that and how we uh, and what we're going to do to move forward. Because without the cover, everything in that thing is dead. Right? More in my plane? <laughs> I don't really. Aaron's we're gone a, mute. I'm just. Uh, we're in a brave new world of uh, spring gardening because it's still. We are. We are over 20 days. We are over a month away from our last frost date. Right. I mean, we're a good five weeks away from our last frost date. The bad thing. I don't about, know what's going to happen. Yeah, the bad thing about the the high tunnel coming apart is that now this adds a bunch of work to our schedule every single day because now we're babysitting that, mm -hmm. and uh, and making sure what's going on there. So. Uh, we're, okay, so also we had um, just this evening, about uh, just a few minutes ago, uh, we had a calf that was born. I managed to get some video of that. I did arrive a little bit late. I knew she was in labor. Uh, I came back in to probably set up for live stream, looked out the window. She's literally like 300 yards away from three, 400 yards away from the house and uh, looked outside and boom, there's a calf. So I uh, ran out there really quick for you. We got some video of that for you. Um, and that's all coming up uh, today. And we're going to take your questions and we're going to try to answer them. Try is the is the operative word there because sometimes we don't have all the answers, and the if anybody ever noticed the live stream does the chat goes by pretty quick so we're going to try to um, keep up with it and get some of these questions answered. Our moderators are going to help us with us tonight. We with us tonight. That's why I'm like a game show guy. With us tonight we have Ron Connors, Matt from Chicago, and Bob Nash guy from you guessed it Nashville, Illinois, and uh, Blake. And Blake is here. I didn't see I Blake. I saw Blake earlier. Okay, and Blake is here. From Guy in Wyoming. Guy in Wyoming. You can check out his channel and uh, see what he's up to. I actually haven't had a chance to look at his channel in a while. What is he up to? I don't know. I reposted a video lately, Blake. Yeah, what are you up to, Blake? Let us know, man. <laughs> You're not here. <laughs> Uh, anyway, um, can we swap weather? Uh, that's Ryan from Humphrey Family Holsteins. If you subscribe to the Herd Report, which you can do on our website, uh, www.rwyomenglife.com, uh, we put out a weekly newsletter and we featured um, Humphrey Family Holsteins in that uh, in last Mondays. God, it seems like it should be like... Like Monday was like weeks ago. It seems like Monday was like weeks ago. Um, <laughs> last Monday, we featured uh, Humphrey Family Holsteins in there and kind of gave you a little bit of their backstory. And you can go and check them out as well. So because we really do believe and, you know, we, we got lucky. I can I can totally, you know, I mean, we put a lot of work into it, but I think that we there was a lot of luck involved. And and we feel that, uh, you know, that paying it forward type thing definitely yeah. helps. So uh, Ryan and Humphrey Family Holsteins. And of course, uh, check out Blake and Guy and White. And I, I don't want your forecast. Mike showed me the forecast for your area, Humphrey, Ryan, I don't, Humphrey. <laughs> Humphrey. Um, I don't want it to be a hundred degrees. Like, you know, 55 would be cool. And you know, five mile an hour wind. Yeah. <laughs> and, yeah. And I think, I think they deal with a lot of wind there yeah. too. They're up close to the panhandle in Texas. And, but I don't and, want it to be a hundred degrees. No, no. Yeah. Okay. So you want to answer? Let's questions? answer, let's answer a couple questions before we get into this whole thing. Um, What's you know what I should probably scroll back. Let me scroll back. I hate doing this because then I lose track of what's you gotta going forget, on. You got to remember to scroll down. Yeah, um, yeah, because then I'm like you know ten minutes behind. Um, starting to plant my garden this weekend. That's cool. Awesome. Thumbs up. Yeah, that's awesome. I'm yeah. trying to keep mine alive. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, <laughs> let's see. You can do split screen with two people. That's from a Canadian welder farmer. I don't know how to do it, but I'm sure you can. You can probably do split screens um, somehow. It's just windy. I mean, now the wind did go down, but earlier, I mean, we I water. I had to water today um, because it is windy. Everything dried out super fast. And man, it was miserable. It was. And Erin had to do her hair like four times today. I did have my hair down. That was a horrible mistake. So <laughs> I had to brush my hair and it took like 20 minutes. And the girls were like, what are you doing, mom? <laughs> so, they asked you what you were doing going yeah. your hair? Yeah, well, I was like sitting at the kitchen table helping Mackenzie with math homework. And they were just both like, what are you doing? Awesome. Um, Christy uh, Dunham was our big winner last week for the trivia. She got her t-shirt and her mug. Awesome. So We were actually really good about sending that stuff out like, Right, right away. away. Yeah, it's one of those, if we don't do it, I, like I'm horrible on emails right now. I'm way behind on email. So if you've sent me an email and I haven't answered you yet, that's because I suck uh, at email. Uh, I, I just, I, I'm like 70 emails behind right now, which actually I'm really doing that bad. But um, for some reason, I just, I have a hard time with emails. So um, if you have emailed us, I'll we'll get, get back to, to you eventually. Um, the wrench guys are actually our moderators. So uh, thanks you to those guys again. And uh, if you were interested in being a moderator, you can always get a hold of me. You can send me an email, and we'll see what uh, see what we can do about that. I'm scrolling down fast here. Aren't yeah. 
Um, time for vacations. Let's talk about that really quick. Aaron, you take that. Uh, time for vacations. Where do you go? Who looks after the farm? That's from Ellips, Ellipsman. Take um, that. I'm going to scroll through. We usually take one vacation a year <clears throat> and sometime in June. Um, after I get the gardens planted and before I have to weed a lot and after Mike's done calving. Um, we've gone to Yellowstone. We went to Denver last year. We're going to go to the Black Hills this year. Yeah, so. we've got a couple friends of ours that we're um, going to vacation with this year and we're going to rent a cabin or something yeah. and be able to... Uh, um, and um, neighbors take care of the farm and my mom will help too. She'll, uh, my mom will be on chicken duty. <laughs> Chicken <laughs> Let yeah. chickens in, let the chickens out. Um, kind of vegan. Uh, I love that name. Kind I do of too. vegan. That's, that's, that's funny. Uh, my tomatoes are flowering, but no fruit yet. So, I mean, that's a good sign, right? Um, yeah. So, it takes six weeks um, typically from blossom to mature tomato, ripe tomato. Mm -hmm. um, if you're worried about pollination, just go jiggle your plants and then the pollen will drop because tomatoes are self pollinating and you'll get fruit. I so, look at that. We learned something today. Yeah. Uh, oh, Terry's here. Hey, Terry from Justin, Texas. Terry uh, comments all the time. I, I love these people. I, I don't know. I just I answer. I answer a lot of comments. In case you've never noticed, uh, we answer pretty much every comment that comes through, and I answer a lot of them. So I end up meeting a lot of these people. It is weird too, though, because we were talking about this the other day, and like, um, who did I? T who was I talking to that that they were like, you know, we feel like we know you. Oh. You know, and that was a comment I got on one of my. Videos. That's what it was, yeah. yeah. And and you know that they know us, you know, personally, which you do. And then for 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 us, you guys are a, a name on a screen, which is, which we do. Of, like the ones that you guys that comment like all the time, like Mike gets more comments on his videos than I do, and I read all the comments, mm -hmm. but. You answer all your comments. I answer eventually. all. Yeah, I answer all my comments. <laughs> Mike answers his comments, but yeah, I mean, we do get to know you guys, but yeah, I mean, it's a different relationship compared. You guys yeah. get to interact with our but lives. But it's cool because you, we do we do learn about people. Like, I know Terry's, a lot of Terry's backstory for some weird reason. I think Terry <laughs> sent me an email at one point and told me the whole thing. But, um, you know, so feel free. You know, if you, we, we love getting that. And we love, we love hearing your stories as well as ours because yours are just as important as ours. We're just... I don't want to say. We're just on the internet. Yeah, we're just on the internet. So. <laughs> hey, we got a super chat. We got a super chat from David Harris, who is another. Uh, He's here a lot. Commenter. Yeah. yeah. Sorry about the wind damage. Yeah, it's. Uh, thanks for the twenty dollars. Yeah, thanks. Help for, buy a new cover. Yeah, new covers. <laughs> just really quick. Uh, new cover costs what? Eight hundred bucks for that mm. thing, right in there. Probably more like fifteen. Fifteen hundred dollars. Yeah. For a new cover. Yeah. <laughs> we're in the wrong business. <laughs> I need to learn how to make covers. <laughs> so um, thank you, David. We really appreciate it. Yeah, that. that's that's awesome of you, man. That's uh, that's gonna help. And we're sorry about the wind damage. It's an unfortunate you, situation. It was a rough day yesterday. Aaron had a very. This is not the first time we've lost a cover. So I mean, I've been through this. It's um, the first time when we lost a cover when plants were at a critical phase. Um, it's yeah. I mean, I don't enjoy it. Um, yeah, I don't know. It is what it is. We're just going to move forward and, and try and keep the stuff alive. That's yep. all I can do. It's so. all a good day. I always I always say everything's it's a great it's a good day around here as long, if we end the day and everything's still alive. That's all plants. That's all alive still. The funny myself. thing is, I was telling Mike this last night. Like the worst winds are going to be were today and then tomorrow. Right. Um, and I was like, well, now, like I, I figured if we made it through yesterday, if we had, like you know, today was going to be worse. So we we had like thirty six hours of really bad wind forecast, and we're not out of it yet. Right. Um. And so last night I was just like, well, we don't have to worry about it blowing off tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> so. kind of, you know, you do worry about and when we have high winds, you worry about the high tunnel. So oh, yeah, it's horribly. one less thing to worry about. Um. You want to show the video for the high tunnel? Do we want to show the video for the high tunnel? Uh. Yeah, yeah let's just we do can it. do that. Um, really quick, uh, we're not going to do trivia today. Sorry, guys. We can't. Uh, we I actually sat down and figured it out, and trivia last week cost us a couple hundred bucks. So <laughs> we're probably not going to do it every single week. So we but, really, uh, we love doing trivia, and we want to share our merchandise with you guys, and you guys turned out in enormous numbers, and the comments were amazing. Yeah, amazing. We had 1,700 comments on one That's live stream, insane. which is amazing. We still didn't break 400 people, though, so that kind of... <laughs> Blow me out. That was well, <laughs> what I was really trying to do was break 400. Um, but it's definitely not something that we can we can't afford to do that <laughs> every single time. Yeah. <laughs> every single time. So we will definitely do trivia again. Though, yeah. so. I saw Matt said gorilla tape. That's what you use, isn't it? Gorilla. I tape? use gorilla tape. I don't use flex tape. Is there a difference? I've never heard of flex tape. Isn't that the as seen on TV like the flex spray? Isn't there a flex tape now? 
maybe it works really well. I use Gorilla Tape. Gorilla Tape works really good. It works better than the expensive greenhouse. I've used greenhouse tape and that doesn't work. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so anyway, yeah, the tunnel blew apart and uh, we're going to show you and we're going to kind of walk you through uh, what happened here. So. I got the phone call hey, and here, it's rainy on your gator. It, it did rain just before this happened. That probably um, didn't help we got about uh, about a, a three tenths of an inch of rain, but it came down fast for like five minutes. Uh, so the, the tunnel actually ripped from where the wiggle wire is along that board that you see, and it, uh, it it took off, and that's pretty much it. Once it started to rip, um, there's no there's no grabbing it. Um, the thing is a giant kite. It'll fly you halfway to China, probably. Well, and it never comes down far enough that you could grab it. Even if I could grab it, I wouldn't want to. No. I think that thing would rip my arms off. Um, this is from the inside. Um, it's a lot louder than what you can oh, probably hear. Oh, it's horribly yeah. loud. Yeah, very, very loud. When we got it off, like, just the, the whole ranch just, like, became oh, silent. Oh, you could hear it. I was out checking cows, and I could hear it flapping. Um, once the wind did start to go down... And it's uh, it's still blowing about 20 miles an hour, maybe here. No, I think 15, we were 20. like 15-ish. We decided okay. we could go out and try and do it, um, and it continued to go down. The wind did. So yeah, I think it helps. It helped to go down. Um, basically, just got up on a ladder and started cutting it off, um, working my way uh, up and over. And then once we had the ends cut, we had to think about this because we were kind of worried about how to take this thing off. Um, we don't want it to end up you know, flying across the ranch. So Yeah, but then we cut it and it didn't go anywhere. That's what's funny. Yeah, we cut it and then it didn't go anywhere. Um, so then we actually had to pull it off. It it kind of it kind of glued itself right to the to the framework there. Um, this tunnel is 30 feet wide, 72 feet long. So there's a lot of plastic there. And once um, we were able to actually get hands on it and then we were able to cut the rest of it off, we left these two little sections at both ends. Uh, connected just in case it did blow over and then we were able to uh, start pulling it which we'll do here in a, any minute now I don't know why this is taking you were so cutting long. It. Oh, okay. No, so, <laughs> cut it. so yeah once we started pulling it then then the whole thing just came right off um, so obviously now we have a tunnel uh, without any wind protection and without any snow protection and we are expecting a storm here um, starting tonight that plastic all lays down we finished cutting it off and then we laid out the plastic because now we can use this plastic as basically making a low, a low tunnel, a low tunnel, a, a lower version, a smaller version of the high tunnel. We're scaling down. <laughs> we scaled down. Um, That's we're, one way to look we're scaling way down. <laughs> um, so we took the big giant tunnel and made it into a bunch of littler tunnels. So that's pretty much it. Um, that's how it sits. That's how it was sitting last night. We were out until what, nine o'clock or so. It was late. Um, getting it done. And then this morning we, so last night we put all the, all the plastic back over the, the rows, weighted them down with water bottles. Um, this morning we come out and the whole thing is blown to heck. Um, yeah, because we had 40 and 50 mile an hour winds all day today. So now there's nothing on it. Um, if the wind goes down, which hopefully, like when I looked out before we started, it had gone down. So after we're done, we will go cover everything back up and bring in some more weights. We've got some more plans for yeah, weights. Yeah, we got to figure out how to weight it down. But uh, another super chat from Dylan Sands. Uh, remember me, you should try hurricane tape. What is, mm -hmm. I, see now, I don't know what that is. I have to Google that. Thank God for Google. All right. So flex tape and hurricane tape. Flex tape we'll and look. hurricane tape. So, we'll look into that. Thank you, thank Dylan. you Dylan. Yes, Appreciate thank it. you very much. Um, so yeah, that's where we're sitting now with the high tunnel is we're we're now low tunnels and hopefully because you have you have what broccoli, kale, spinach, lettuce, cauliflower, and cauliflower, and radishes and spinach. Yeah, radish, spinach. yeah, that's all. Uh, that's all planted in there now, and we don't want it all to die. Obviously, yeah. I really the, my priority is the lettuce. We have three hundred heads of Salanova lettuce. I want to save the lettuce yeah um, and, and we I do have farmers market next week yeah i do have farmers market next so, week so <laughs> um if we don't save it then there go there well, goes that, and the that. lettuce won't be ready but um spinach um i should have spinach but you know we'll see what happens <laughs> yeah we'll definitely see what happens um, um moving right along let's jump back into the q a here for a few we're at 7 20 so we're doing good on time okay let's jump back in the q a uh what is that windmill power or pump um it actually powers nothing everything <laughs> technically. I say um, nothing. You we, say everything. <laughs> well, technically it powers nothing, but 
technically it powers everything. Um, basically, it generates power, electricity. Really? Uh, it sends it back <laughs> down. You are just a smart butt tonight. Um, it sends it back down the line. We don't actually use any electricity. We probably do, but um, we don't use any electricity here. It sends it back down the line. We sell it back to the power company. And then, um, but it does about a third of the power where it used to, probably not now that your mom built her house, yeah, but, uh, true. it used to do about a third of the power on the ranch. Um, <laughs> uh, now probably less than that, but it's, it's been out here for what it's going on, oh gosh. going on 10 years, oh, probably. close to 10 years. Yeah. yeah. It's been here for a while. So, um, yeah, that's the, the wind generator. What caliber is the gun in your gator? Do you know this? Do you know the answer to this question? Um, you have a 30-30 or a 22. Hey, look at that. 30-30 lever action. And it's not mine. It actually belongs to our neighbor. I have a 22. That'd be curious. I have a 22, too. Yeah, but I don't usually. I haven't kept a 22. We have a skunk problem going on right now. And I told I'm, you to shoot them the other day. I, I, there, there's an air compressor right there next to them. And I don't want to shoot that. And then there's a propane tank outside. They were in the cat food. They were in the cat food. And the door's food. broken, so you can just stuck it in the hole in the door. <laughs> the door broke on the on the shop going into the sales bar and the little the door handle <laughs> broke, so I ripped it out and now I've got a nice little people. Um <laughs> skunk hole. A skunk hole. But yeah. Anyway, yeah, the twenty two If you subscribe to the newsletter too, you would have saw video of the skunks. Those darn skunks. And we're gonna continue that in the newsletter because now I'm trying to catch them, which isn't really Here's an interesting thing that I haven't learned. I was going to put this in the newsletter, but it's okay because not everybody get, that gets the newsletter is here. Um, I've been feeding these skunks marshmallows. Skunks love marshmallows. Yeah, but you still haven't caught the skunks. So but, I've been, but I've been getting them hooked on marshmallows. I'm like the dealer, man. I'm giving them the marshmallows, and then I'm going to put marshmallows in the trap, and then they will, they will go in the trap for the marshmallows. And then you have to shoot them in the trap. That's my plan. Okay? Hey, my community tab thing just came across. Well, in 10 minutes, we'll be live. Um, yeah, that takes a while, apparently. Uh, yeah, so that's my plan with the skunk. So we're going to continue that as we go along. All right. Um, uh, let's see. How's Bambi doing? Has she had her cat? No. Uh, no. Uh, Bambi is being Bambi. I was out there today. I, no, was it today or yesterday? I took Lincoln out checking cows with me. You took him yesterday in the gator. Yeah, and today in the car. He, he apparently Bambi really likes Lincoln. She was all. She likes about, kids. She loves kids, and she was right up in his grill. <laughs> Did he care? He didn't care. He was he was like petting her, and he like you know, probably a little harder than he than he needed to. But his he's pets pretty are, brave. He petted the peacock the other day too. Yeah, the girls never would have done that. Oh, I saw that question years. go by too. How's the peacock? Peacock's doing great. I was planning on bringing him out, but I think he would have blown, blown to away. South Dakota. It's so funny when he because he's got his tail feathers right now, and um, you know when he had two good legs, and like the wind would, you could see like when he'd have to go across like an open area like between like the shop and like the corrals or something, and the wind would catch him. Like he would walk like sideways. Like he always have the hardest. He has a hard time, time with wind. Um, so hopefully as the weather gets nicer and stuff, he'll, he's hung out in our yard before, just in our fenced yard of our house. And you know, when the weather's nice, we'll bring him out there and put his leg on and the snow and ice, which we don't have any right now, but we're supposed to get some more tonight, um, is treacherous with the peg leg. Yeah, it is. And, and while we're talking about animals, um, uh, Taz, Tam, Tam Taz, uh, said, how are the twins doing? The twins... Oh. Um, we're born how convenient a, how, that you made a video about the twins. Well, I didn't make a video. I actually just, I have a, I have a picture. Oh. Um, these are the twins. They were born, what? Um, oh gosh, a while ago. A while ago. They were, they were, they were, and they're still in the corral, but they're still with their mom, amazingly enough. Um, she is taking care of both of them. And apparently she has enough milk and she's able to do it. Well, she's so, getting grain and lots of hay every day. So She is. She's getting pampered is what she's getting. <laughs> they um, got out today, though. They did. Uh, they. So I came back. When did I? I came back from that. You checked the cow. That I checked the cow that had the calf. Came back. And then here's everybody got. Sunshine. The, and sunshine's, Sunshine, if you remember, was featured in a video last year. She was a calf um, that was severely dehydrated. We ended up bringing her into the barn. Uh, nursing her back to health. I couldn't tell you the video, but um, nursed her back to health. She still lives here on the ranch. She is a runt. She is so she's little. a year old and she's like this tall. Uh, so I don't know what we're ever going to do with her because a bull will literally smush her. She's like 400 pounds. Yeah, exactly. And she's a, yeah, well, she's not quite a year old. She was a late calf. 
She's yeah, she wasn't like a cow, but still, I mean, she's tiny. tiny. So anyway, she she's learned how to open gates for some weird reason. <laughs> and every gates. once in a while, we'll look out. And now I actually <laughs> wired that gate closed, so she can't open it. Unless she figures <laughs> it out on, on twist wire, which she might. So um, who will get the skunk out of the trap? Yeah, Just saying. Yeah, that's what I always want to know. It's like He's like, I can't shoot him in the shop because or in the sales barn because then it stinks. Well, if you shoot him outside, you got to trap him. And then you you still got to get them out of the trap well, or shoot them in the trap. Here's a funny... And then they spray. A few years ago, I caught a skunk when, when Sam worked here. Um, Sam, you probably remember from our branding video, Sam got kicked in the face by the cow in our branding <laughs> video last year. Um, he's in the Army now. He's in, in Hawaii. But uh, him and I caught a skunk one time, right? And it was in the shop or in the, in the barn, in the sales barn. And so we had the bright idea to take like a really long two by four and put it through the handle of the of the of the trap, and then we picked it up, and we we moved it, and it actually worked. We we didn't move it very far. I think we just moved it outside and then shot it, but still it stunk up the whole place anyway. Yeah. So skunks are my my name. It's either skunks or raccoons. We have. Don't say we, raccoons. They're garden nightmares. Yeah, they are. <laughs> They definitely are. Uh, hey, we got another super chat from another Dylan. Another super chat from Dylan. How many cows have had calves? That's a good question. We're uh, we're up in the twenty calf range somewhere in there, I think. So, um, I don't have my notebook with me, so I couldn't tell you. But uh, and I still haven't put anything in the computer either. So I'm still running off of. I mean, I'm still acting like 1953 and writing everything down. <laughs> uh, but uh, yeah, it, it's right in there. Uh, Mitchell Kiss Kinsing Kinsinger. Now that name sounds familiar. Where's Why Mitch? would I know who that is? <laughs> if anybody knows Mitch. Hi Mitch. Hi Mitch. Cover him with a blanket, take him outside. I don't think Mitch and I ever dealt with a skunk. You want to come back and do that? Yeah, he's more than welcome. Uh, everybody say hi to Mitch. Mitch was our ranch hand last year and apparently he's hanging out with us tonight. So <laughs> thanks for coming out, Mitch. Uh, he is, I don't know where he's at now. I haven't talked to him in a while, but he's somewhere in the army. Apparently we send people to the army. <laughs> they work here and then they go to the army. Um, our prairie fire is a concern right now from Sky King. No, it is super wet. It's the mud is starting to dry, yeah. um, which is great, but no, it's super wet still and more snow in the forecast and rain, snow mix and stuff. So, right. Yeah. So we're good on, um, we can have fires in the spring though, if we have a dry winter and stuff. So right. usually we hit our fire season. July, uh, July or August Yeah, is when it gets really bad and the fire truck gets filled up and we're ready to rock and roll. Somebody asked about uh, about jerky. I think it's ready. Hey, how's our website? Is it ready? No. <laughs> <laughs> I I put a I put a post on Reddit asking if anybody word I'm doing this new website on WordPress cuz our website that we have now is done on like the ABC mouse of websites. Um, very simple, easy to use. Grace threw it up in like 10 minutes. Grace. Um, but uh the new one I'm building is a little, it has to be a little bit more intensive because we're going to be selling beef jerky on it. Um, so I put a post on Reddit to see if anybody knew anything. So I figured Reddit, there's got to yeah. be like some nerds on Reddit, you know, yeah. and you nobody wants to help me with it. So if anybody knows WordPress, you know, you can always give me a hand, but, uh, we will have it up and go on here before too We have long. to go to Sturgis and get the jerky and we've been a little busy. So, little bit. um, yeah, soon, I don't know when, but soon, um, Hey, Dylan, thanks for the $2, and hey, Mitch. Hey, Mitch. Hi, hey, Mitch. Mitch is in still in Fort Polk, is in Fort Polk, Louisiana. I bet you it's a little warmer there. Yeah. Uh, what computer program, this is from Julian Bennett, what computer program do you use to manage your herd? Uh, I use Cattle Max, uh, once I put it in there. Right. <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of one of the, yeah. Yeah, it works great if you input data into the program. <laughs> it does work awesome. And I do have, like, all the past stuff is in there, but just nothing from this year yet, just because I haven't gotten. Hey, we have another super chat. Another shoot uh, from Caden uh, Meyer. Is that Meyer? Yeah. Meyer. Um, what is your favorite tractor on the farm? What is your favorite tractor? I like the feeding tractor. Yeah, the 6420 <laughs> is a nice tractor. I really like that tractor. We use it every day, um, so it's kind of our our go-to tractor. We also have a 6400 that I don't mind as, as much. It's a, it's a little bit rougher and a little bit older, but... It works just as well. And the 4055 is our farm tractor um, that we use during haying mostly, unless we have to uh, seed or something like that. We'll use it for seeding. Uh, I, I actually, I really do like the 4055 just because it's bigger. It is big. And bigger is better. <laughs> uh, Wyatt Mo Mogren. Wyatt really wants me to say his name, so I'm going to say it. Hi, Wyatt. 
Wyatt, Wyatt, Wyatt. I said it like four times now, so we're good. Uh, Matt Whitefield. Cord, our son, wants to know what breed of chickens you have. Um, chickens are getting shipped next week. We'll talk about the chickens you have. Um, I don't know what I have. White leghorns. You have white leghorns. You have, uh, what, are the, what are the old ones? Oh, I have uh, buff Orpingtons. Orping I always want to call them like Oppenheimer or something. <laughs> I have some, some that lay green eggs. <laughs> I don't know what the green egg laying ones are. You know. But we've ordered more Leghorns, more Buff Orpingtons, um, a bunch of different weigh-in dots, um, Cherry Eggers, and they're coming next week. So we'll have a chicken video for you guys here shortly. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, they'll be here probably next Thursday. We'll get baby chicks. So you need to get that chicken hopper thing up and running. Yeah, the chicken, the chicken, chicken <laughs> enclosure <bin. laughs> brooding thing. So. Um, from Australia, you guys should make another... Dang it, it just went out of my screen. Uh, you guys should make another account to do with cooking and gardening, and you could call it our Wyoming Gardening. Um, it's like you... a whole lot of work to manage a YouTube channel. I don't know that we'd want to do another one. Never, I wouldn't say that we'll never do another one. Um, no, I kind of feel like our Wyoming life encompasses everything that we do here, um, whether it's gardening, ranching, you know, uh, raising kids. Um, in you, a, know, you know, in a ranch setting. Yeah. I mean, like Mackenzie's homework didn't get done last night because we were working till nine o'clock in the high tunnel. Yeah, we had know? to tell her, tell your teacher <laughs> you didn't do your homework. She's in first grade, first of all. Why does she have homework? Um, but uh, <laughs> she didn't do her homework because mom and dad were out working in the high tunnel and she was at Grammy's house uh, watching us. And I, get, I actually had asked you for help on homework tonight. I was like, I don't understand this. <laughs> I don't <laughs> yeah, understand right. first grade math. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, yeah, so I think, you know, all all the things that we show on the channel, from the cooking to the gardening to, you know, the family stuff, like, it's all, it, it would be a lot different if this wasn't our life, if we didn't live on the ranch and we weren't both working from the ranch. Um, so, yeah, I mean, our Wyoming life's all about the ranch life. Right. So. Exactly. Um, just don't shoot them in the, the skunks in the building. Yeah, sometimes that's a little tough. I'm guessing you're talking about skunks. I actually shot a raccoon in the kitchen of the shop one time. That was a weird story, but um, there's still bullet holes in the wall from that. But yeah, you try not to shoot them inside. You know, you throw a tarp over them, you can move them. Um, yeah, kind can. of, sometimes. They actually make traps for skunks too or that are shorter, lift. that they can't lift their tail. The hard thing is getting the skunks in the trap, though, because we have 9 million barn cats. Mm -hmm. So all we do is catch cats. We do catch a lot of cats. That's why I'm doing the marshmallow thing. See, cats won't eat marshmallows. I tested this. I tried to feed a cat a marshmallow. They didn't want it. But the skunks love them. So I figure if I use marshmallows as bait, okay. then the skunks will come in. Okay, perfect. Yeah, okay. <laughs> Harold wants to know, would you recommend using Cattle Max? I like Cattle Max. Actually, I've never tried any other program besides Cattle Max, so... Um, I like it. Once you get used to it, you know, you can, uh, um, you put in a cow, you put in her birthday, you put in all her information, you can actually put a picture of her if you want to. Um, all her color, if she's, we did cut, like if she's red or black right. or baldy or whatever. And, and you can, as long as you're on top of it and you, and you, you know, put your information in, you can, you know, keep track of all their medical issues. If you have a cow that has, you know, had, had to deal with foot wrap before, you know, you can keep track of that. Um, it works out well that way, so. I like Cattle Max, and now they should pay me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, you sent them an email. Mm -hmm. We can do a video about Cattle Max. <laughs> uh, Michael, would you venture into the grain side of farming? We ain't got no water. Yeah, water's I a mean, big issue. I mean, there's a little but... tiny, tiny bit of farming that happens in our part of the state, but um, mostly you don't ever produce enough. To yeah. make it worth your time. There's quite a few people. There's Well, there's not that many anymore, but there was a few that, that did some farming around here. Um, I don't know. I, you know, it's, We don't have the equipment. That would be a big issue, too. I mean, I have friends that farm in Montana and get eight inches of rain a year, and they're able to still farm. But the soil makes a big Soil's difference. Um, all kinds of different things. So that makes sense. So, Whoa, careful. Sorry, it's a mouse down here. <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing half the time. Come on, leave me alone. Good morning. Hey, and we're back. Hey, we're doing mail time. <laughs> it's time for mail time. Even, like, warn me. I didn't warn you because I just threw, I just went right into it. All right. 
So we did uh, we did get quite a few. Um, if you want to send us something, it's PO Box 667, Gillette, Wyoming 82717. Seven. And it's in the description. Yeah, but pretty. I've learned pretty much any zip code you put on it, it'll get to us because I've messed <laughs> that up before and it's gotten here. So we got quite a few things. We're going to get through them really quickly, but thank you to everyone who has sent us stuff. We love going to the post office. Grace usually gets to go with because it's between preschool and elementary pickup time, and she thinks it's awesome. And the gals at the post office, they think we're, they, they're like, what is going on? <laughs> Why do you get this? Why do you get this Someone's many like, packages? Someone's like, so you're like famous, right? And yeah. I was like, no. No. I did get recognized at kindergarten screening the other day, too. I didn't tell you that yesterday. Did you really? You have a gardening channel on YouTube, right? Sure you do. Oh, <laughs> yeah. speaking of which, um, our high tunnel situation, this is actually a really good story, and I wanted to throw this out here. We'll um, do it in mail time. Oh, yeah. I'll do mail time. Then I'll come back to that. Matt, remind me that I need to tell people about... Something about with the high tunnel, and I won't know what you're talking about. All right, um, so this one comes from uh, Grand Rapid, Michigan. Uh, my wife and I have enjoyed your videos immensely. The you're not reading that whole I'm not going to read this whole thing. Uh, the life of the ranch in the Wyoming is clearly made clear. We appreciate cooking and canning. It reminds us of what, uh, or so much of what our homes were like when we grew up in Michigan. Um, I recently just fr tried your fried chicken recipe and was reminded that it tasted very much like my mother used to make back in the 1950s. It's an old recipe. It is an old recipe. Maybe it really is generations old. It is. I it's very so. old. Yeah. Um, so apparently, um, this is from Jerry and Laura, and Jerry is a bit of a woodcrafter. This is actually pretty intricate. I mean, this is small. This is intricate. I don't know how he did it, but I we'll imagine show the people. I'm going to show people. <laughs> Um, I'm gonna hold it up here. So uh, that's kind of that's off of our logo yeah, um, that you see cool. that you see on our website. So we're gonna hang that up. He also sent us another one that has. Um, I'm guessing it's a camel. It says some of the letters. Does it? <laughs> I did. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna hold that up as well. A camel following the star to find the savior in Bethlehem of Judea. There you go. Wise men are still seeking him. These. A Christmas, it's a Christmas ornament. It's a Christmas ornament. It's oh, really okay. Cool. That's why. That's what's the string. That'll go on our tree. There like, you go. Like light bulb. <laughs> thank you guys. Yes, very much. thank you They're very much. Beautiful. Um, and they Mike laughed at me, but I smelled them, and they smelled like a tree, and it's I love the smell of it. So. Yeah, that's very cool. So those will be uh, will be kept, of course. Um, another uh, thing that we got is from Vermont. I don't have the city because I oh wait a minute no I, do I have the box. This is from Melissa and John, um, yeah, and they do maple syrup in Vermont. Um, if anybody is interested um, in their sugar house, um, you can look them up on Facebook and Google. It's a uh, Williamson's Sugar House, but right. they sent us some maple syrup, um, some powdered maple syrup, which I've never seen before. Maple sugar. Maple sugar. It's really good. Did you show show, show the folks? Show the folks. <laughs> it is kind of cool. I mean, when we started the mail call thing, I really didn't didn't and think it would fly. Some sorghum syrup, which I don't know what sorghum syrup is, but I can use the Google machine. And find <laughs> the out. Google machine. That came from a comment, by the way. Um, so yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much from Melissa and John. And um, I love real maple syrup, so I'm excited right. to use that. So. Uh, next one, we're going to cruise through these really fast. Uh, the next one here is from uh, Dave, who actually lives somewhere. New York. Yeah, somewhere. Yeah, in New York. <laughs> and Dave was nice enough to send things along for the kids. And I can tell you, Dave, Something that else. the girls got a little glimpse at these and they've been driving us they've been like, driving us I nuts put them for up week. high but like because they're short i didn't think they could see them but apparently they're getting taller they can like the sniff that stuff out man. <laughs> they're like we got toys we can't and i was like you have to wait till mail time and, and they're not even here yeah they're at grandma's yeah. but they'll get them when they come back so thank you dave um dave also sent us these little guys a few of these little figurines there's like six of them and yeah. they're all different um these are Show called the folks. these are called hummels and I had never heard of them, but they are um, German figurines. They're super cool. They There's are super like some cool. gardening ones, and there's one with a pig. Yeah, which I, is probably in a box here. And I, I, if I picked a box, I would pick the wrong one. But uh, these are very cool. So thank you, Dave. Thank Thanks, you Dave. very much for that. So that's pretty much it for oh, mail time. No, we got one more. We do. You don't know about this. I don't know about this. <laughs> are you hiding things from me? Yeah, now? I got told to hide this from you. Uh, Who told you to hide it from me? Matt did. Matt, our moderator, sent this, and this is for you, and you can open it. <laughs> you weren't supposed to know about it. I wasn't supposed to know about it. <laughs> Scheming behind my back? Yes. It's an Oscar. Yeah. I got an Oscar. You got an Emmy. Or an Emmy, whatever <laughs> it is. 
the board would like to recognize uh, the world's greatest dad. Show the folks. How would he know? I'm not his dad. <laughs> it's like an Oscar. <laughs> it does look like an Oscar. <laughs> Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Matt. I appreciate that. That's pretty cool. Why is the guy bald, though, man? Because <laughs> you're bald. <laughs> All right. So Thank there we you, go. guys. Thank we you very did. much. That is uh, is mail time. Should I play the intro again at the end? No. Okay. <laughs> Moving along. We missed about 500 Oh, chats, goodness. I'm sure. Uh, Matt says, supposed to remind me of something, and I don't remember what it is. Um, the story. Oh, yeah. The, see? This is the problem with this whole thing. Uh, Mackenzie's story. We already told Mackenzie's story in Menards last, or not in Menards, but in... That was in... Uh, or it was co -op. in Co-op. It wasn't in Menards. Why are we have Menards? I'll tell a quick Mackenzie story. We don't watch much TV in our house, but the kids watch YouTube, which is fitting, right? Right. Um, but we went to Menards, and I, I had to get... I don't know what I had to get something for the garden um but we pull into the parking lot and she's like make big money at menards <laughs> i was like how do you know this and she's like i saw i saw it on my youtube on ipad on my on, I saw it on youtube on my ipad <laughs> all right um this this is a really good example and a, and a, and a perfect story uh about what happened with the high tunnel oh so you got the trophy because of the story in co-op Oh, that's the tr okay. There we go. If you missed it, Mackenzie pretended to have a seizure in the middle of co-op, the feed store, because she has a friend who has seizures, and she wanted to show me um, what she's supposed to do when her friend has a seizure. So she <laughs> had a seizure, had a seizure, a fake seizure, and I had to stand there and watch her while people are watching me, watching my kid, and I'm like, "Get up, get up!" <laughs> Whisper, yelling, "Get up!" Yeah. And they're like, "Oh my gosh!" Okay, so thank you, Matt. That makes more sense. I'm a little sleep, sleep deprived <laughs> at this point, maybe a little bit. Um, we've been calving, so I just I, I don't sleep anymore. Actually, I do, but mm. it's just very sporadically. Um, the story about the high tunnel. This is a great uh, testament to um, I don't know the human spirit. The, I don't know <laughs> community. Uh, the community <laughs> type thing. Um, we do have viewers that that live here, oddly enough, and. It, for it's us, that's... Become, I think they're becoming more numerous. Are they? <laughs> well, I get recognized. You get recognized. Well, Somebody, I like, cell phone snuck our picture oh, I forgot at Doba the other day. Probably yeah. while I was shoving chips and queso in my mouth. That was weird. That was very weird. Um, I'll tell that story in a second. But uh, <laughs> It's just a uh, story time, apparently. <laughs> um, this, this, this is actually this is a good community story because um, Aaron posted today on Facebook about the tunnel blowing apart. We had people show up out here to Just help one person yeah but he showed up to help and conveniently we were out there trying to fix stuff right, right. um so yeah it was so just, so so don it? shows up out here we've never met him before in our life and he's like what can we do to help yeah. what can i do to help how can i help you so i mean that is awesome was, that and we got that blows me away. i haven't answered any of the facebook or instagram comments from the the tunnel post but everyone um there was tons of, of, you know, we're sorry and we wish we could help. And if I live closer, I would be there. And so thank you guys. Um, you know, when we put the plastic on, if you want to come out, you know. <laughs> it's always a trip. Last time we put plastic on, Nick stood inside the high tunnel and drank a beer. I remember that. You really only need about four or five people. You do. Yeah. But, um, the, the, the picture story kind of blew us away, too. Aaron and I were in town. We had dropped off Grace for school. So it was right around lunchtime, and we decided to go out to Kidoba and grab something to eat. And we're sitting there eating, and, yeah, somebody kind of pulled one of these numbers on us. And, like, and I, and I told like, Aaron, I, I think like, that person just took our picture. <laughs> I was like, what? Let me eat some burrito bowl. <laughs> yeah. Like, weird. Yeah. If you guys see us and you want our picture, just come and I'll take a selfie with you. Yeah. That's why cool. Not? Selfies are cool. We get recognized more and more, though. A little bit here and there. I haven't been recognized for quite a while. So. Well, I got recognized yesterday. You're, so. you're the man. Yeah. How's um, that? Thoughts on using the Moo Call this year? That's from Case uh, Farmer. I actually. Bambi. I do need to use it this year. Um, so the, the, the Moo Call has a yearly subscription. Oh, you got to renew it. Which I need to renew, and I haven't done yet. So I need to do that so that everything works so I can get out and use it. Um, we'll also be using the FLIR this year, the thermal imager. Um, You've been using it. You I've been using it. I just it. haven't shown it. Um, but we'll be using that more um, this year as well. So we'll be playing around with thermal imaging. We'll have the the uh, Moo call, and if anybody else knows of any other cool weird technology, yeah, let me know because I can always um, get into it. Let's start a new segment called Story Time. <laughs> All right, let's answer some questions. Okay, that's let's what people do that. Like Josh Harris, what license do you have to have to sell your vegetables at the farmer's market? Um, 
you our market doesn't require any licensing to sell vegetables. Um, if you're going to use a scale, you need a weights and le measures license. Um, if you're going to sell seedlings, you need a nursery license, all obtained through the Department of Ag. So every market might be different, but um, as far as I'm aware, and I could be wrong, federally there is no license to resell to sell vegetables. If you're reselling somebody else's vegetables, then we have to have a distributor's license, again, through our Department of Ag. Right. So. Um, Preston, why don't you use the skid loader as much? This is an interesting situation that we run into quite a bit um, with emails and comments and stuff like that. We put out three videos a week, which are about 10 minutes a piece. So you see 30 minutes. 30 minutes a week of what we're doing. I mean, there's all kinds of other stuff going on. So yeah, I use the skid steer all the time. I just use it when I need to use it. If I'm using, if I'm cleaning out barns or cleaning out corrals, that kind of thing, I use it for that kind of stuff. Um, I use it as forklift a lot of times. Uh, sometimes the, the tractor bucket works better for what I'm doing. It all depends on like what attachments you have on, what piece of equipment, for what job you're using. And Some of it depends on what I'm standing closer to yeah. at the time when I'm like, I need a bucket. And, you know, the tractor bucket's bigger. I can use it to haul, um, you know, we did the, the, the project list this week. We hauled out that fence. Um, the tractor bucket's bigger. Well, and you want the grapples. Using. And the grapples, yeah. So, I mean, yeah. It makes Bobcat sense. doesn't have grapples. Right. So, yeah, that's kind of how, how it works there. Um, Robert Harrell's asked a couple times about cows with founders uh, or foundering cows. Um, I actually really haven't had too many cows. We get more hoof rot type situations that we end up having to deal with. Um, with that, we just pump them full of antibiotics. They're beef cows, so... Um, it's a little bit harder to like wrap a hoof if we have to, um, but we pump them full antibiotics with that. Usually with, with hoof rot at this point, I'll call the vet out and have them look at it as well. Um, just because it can go south pretty darn quick with what we found out last year with the cow that had hoof rot mm -hmm. and uh, we ended up losing her with hoof rot. So. Yeah. Right. Um, okay. Your turn. Um, Taryn wants to know about gardening. When should I start my seedlings? Um, so you just always work backwards, um, figure out when your last frost date was, and then look at the seed packet, see how long it's, it should say like broccoli will tell you four to six weeks before transplant date. So figure out when your frost is, cause that's when you can transplant and then start your seedlings according to the package. So I only have tomatoes and peppers started right now and celery cause celery takes forever. Does it really? <laughs> yeah. So. Celery is good though. If you've never had celery from a garden, first of all, it looks totally different than celery from a store. Yeah. To me, it looks different. This stuff I bought this year is a different kind and it's a little more like commercial celery looking, but yeah, like last year it was like a lot darker. Um, and the leaves are on it, which like they cut off the leaves, you know, before you go to the grocery oh, yeah. store. So, um, yeah, it tastes a lot different. So. Yeah, exactly. Um, have you ever had triplets or quads? No, we've never hit the lottery. No, yeah, that. that is like hitting the lottery. Like you can sell that to like But somebody media. did actually bring up a really good point when I did that video, the Califax video about, you know, how rare twins and, and, and quads and, tri and triplets are. Um, with AIing. Oh, is it higher? It's actually higher. If you, if you artificially inseminate because you're actually, you give the cows a shot, just like the Octobom, you give the cows a <laughs> shot to bring them into cycle so you can actually force them to release more eggs and, and multiple births are actually more common with the uh, artificial insemination which i had never never even thought about when i was making the video so but we i learned something as well we don't artificially inseminate so we do not it uh, would be super rare for us to get triplets it would be and i think the rate i think the the normal natural consumption uh, conception rate i think it was like one in a hundred thousand or something like well, that so we just got a ranch for a really long time a really long time <laughs> um john smith how is your supply of hay for the cows holding out it's getting slim it's getting um, every day I'm out there when I feed, I, I cringe a little. Um, not We're that we close. couldn't get more if we had to. Um, I think we could, um, but I really don't want to have to buy more and make the ranch buy more. So, um, we're, we're getting gonna... close to being done though. Yeah. The cows are out chasing, chasing grass. The grass is literally this big. But they're out, eating, they're out chasing <laughs> it. So, um, all right. What else we got? Do you have any bottle calves? Um, that's from Connie Van. Not yet. Not yet. No bottle calves. I thought we were going to uh, win. Um, this was a story that was in our herd report. Excuse me. This was a story that was in the herd report on Monday. If you don't subscribe to it, you can go to our website. You can sign up for it there. Um, but we had a cow, number 84, that we heard mooing. 
like crazy. Bummer. Just like just right outside our, literally our house is right next to the pasture that the cows are in. So she was right up to the gate, just bawling like crazy. Uh, went out to check on her, see what was going on. She had a calf with her. I got the calf up. The calf was able to stand. I thought, well, maybe she's, who knows what her problem is. Left, came back uh, into the house. She just wouldn't shut up. And finally went out and um, grabbed her calf, brought it into the barn, found out that her calf was hypothermic. Her calf was dehydrated um, and had really bad scours. So what this is scours, scours is basically E. coli um, that calves get. Um, causes diarrhea, of course, causes dehydration. And um, she, this cow, was basically telling us that she there was a problem. Like she, she was yeah. just, just bawling, and which was great because it really let us know. And they bawl if they lose them. And oh, they'll let us know. So yeah, you were yeah, like, yeah. "Well, your calf's there; it can get up; it's fine." But then, like when it kept going on and on, then it was like, "Okay, something, something's wrong." Mm -hmm. So, and she was absolutely right; there was something wrong with her calf. When you brought it in, it couldn't really stand. Right. And Two I thought days. maybe we might have a bottle cap out of that. Long story short, no bottle cap. Not yet. Um, we brought her in. I got her in about four o'clock that morning. I was out checking everybody anyway, and she happened to be standing right next to a gate that was very convenient. I opened the gate. She came right in. She knew where her baby was. She at. knew her baby was in the barn. She, you know, came in and uh, I had, I had the, the calf was in the shop actually. And, uh, brought her in and then the next morning I reunited the two and they've been doing fine. Since. That morning though, like, cause we left the calf just in the shop, just unattended right like just free range in the shop so like we both went out there and we're like where are you at and then we couldn't find it it was like mm -hmm. hiding between the gator and the cake trailer and i was like where are you at and he just stood there and stared at us right yeah they you know <laughs> but he was fine he was standing up he was ready to go so um we got him back out with his mom he seems to be doing a lot better he's still a little lethargic he's probably still you know not feeling great but he's doing better probably needs so. more scour pills he probably does need more scour pills thank you aaron <laughs> I'll go do that right now. You're on your own. <laughs> All right. Um, let me see. I'm, I'm trying to read and pick one. This is like a lot of pressure. A lot of pressure. <laughs> How much produce do you sell at each market? Like 100 tomatoes, 100 pounds of beef. Um, so it changes every week. Um, depends on, you know, what we can pick. So, um, you know, sometimes I'll take, you know, in the spring it'll start out like in May, I'll have lettuce and spinach and radishes. So, you know, I've taken, you know, 40 bundles of radishes and 25 bags of lettuce. And, you know, in the summertime, sometimes I've taken 300 pounds of tomatoes and 50 mm -hmm. pounds of potatoes and, you know, 80 some pounds of zucchini. And I mean, so it just depends on what's harvesting at the time. We always start out really slim with just lettuce and radishes in July. And then as things pick up and in the fall, you know, I would say in the fall when we have pumpkins and winter squash and potatoes and beets and like heavy stuff, I mean, gosh, we got to haul at least a thousand pounds of produce to market some weeks. Yeah, easily. And then when it comes to the beef and pork, um, you know, it, we could sell anywhere from a hundred pounds to 500 pounds in one day. We, you know, if somebody buys a package, yeah. um, you know, we could sell it just, it, you know, we had one guy, remember what was it? It's been the last few years, but there's a guy that comes and buys 30 ribeyes at a time. Yeah, so I'm going to be like, I want all your ribeyes, or yeah. I want all your pork chops. And so and it's happens. just a question of how much we have. And then sometimes Mike even has to come back to the ranch and restock on stuff. You know, I if do. someone comes by 30 pounds of hamburger, you know, we got to come back and restock. So right. um, Dylan hit us up with another super chat. Thank you, Dylan. Thanks, Dylan. Uh, what's your favorite drink? Mine's Mountain Dew. And Dylan, throw up your Instagram account. Just throw it up there in there in a comment, and people can go check it out. Um, <laughs> Aaron's favorite drink is water. I drink a lot of water. I drink a lot of Crystal Light. <laughs> <laughs> but I have certain flavors of Crystal Light. That so I flavored like. water. And I drink Diet Pop. Kool-Aid. You drink the Kool-Aid. <laughs> <laughs> it's not as sugary as Kool-Aid. No, you don't. Um, um, you I, like Mountain Dew? I like Mountain Dew. I'll drink Dr. Dr. Pepper. Pepper or uh, uh, water. <laughs> I mean, it's not... You know, you don't drink that much water. I mean, so it's like, I have a headache. I'm like, drink some water. <laughs> <laughs> if anybody's married, um, feel free to send me your condolences. <laughs> Care of our wedding life, P.O. Box 667. <laughs> <laughs> um, is it profitable for uh, that size of garden? Yes. Um, you it, can cram a lot of produce in my size of garden. Well, you have what? Uh, half an acre? It's like a third. third this year, I'll have 15,000 square feet in production. So think about like whatever the size of your house is. 
That's garden. You know, that makes sense. Yeah. I mean, so yeah, I mean. No, oh, fifteen thousand. Fifteen thousand. But think about like your house, right? So say you have a two thousand square foot house or a thousand square foot house, and then like multiply that out because it's hard, I think, to get a concept of like what a third of an acre is. That's a good idea. I've never thought about that before. Somebody once told me, like, I was telling them how big my high tunnel was because that's thirty foot by seventy foot wide, and it's like twenty one hundred square feet. And someone's like, "That's bigger than my house," and I was like, "Oh, yeah, it, it could is. be." Yeah. So, yeah, that's how I tell people to think about it. Think about whatever size your house is and then, you know, multiply it out. Um, yeah, you can cram a lot, a lot of produce. Um, you know, and our farmer's market isn't huge and we're not in a huge agriculture area. So it's not like I'm competing against like huge farms that can sell cucumbers for 50 cents. Like we sell very competitive pricing on our produce, like very comparable to the grocery store. But some stuff is higher because it takes more work and there's more labor involved or the seeds cost more. And everything you buy from us is much higher quality but right. cucumbers a dollar i mean granted you can get them super cheap in the summer but um you know nothing's outrageously priced so no i mean you pay which you, you pay for what you get but I mean, it, it's all about volume and how much i try to think about like always every year it's how much more can i grow without having to go till up more land because it is amazing what you can do when you utilize your space properly well and the problem that aaron runs into too is you know you once you start gardening too much then it's you can't do it yourself so now you're hiring help and if you have to hire somebody now you have to pay them obviously and you have to pay workman's comp and you have to pay insurance and social security and everything else so you have to be able to make up for that somewhere so we've always figured like if we wanted to hire somebody we would have to double or basically or quadruple. i would have to do the math yeah the math is ridiculous <laughs> hey here's a question that i've sent a lot um you oh you didn't have to super chat to throw up your instagram man I just thought you throw it up there, but thanks, Dylan. Um, you moved the screen. Yeah, sorry, it was sorry. like what? What was what? Huh? Words? <laughs> Never. What was your dream tractor? I think I don't know the name of who asked that. I'm sorry, but I've seen it. The so Ranch Life. Like, what is your dream tractor? Well, you it's go. right there. I, you moved it. I'm moving it all over the place. <sighs> I don't really have a dream tractor, honestly. I mean, I my dream tractor is a tractor that starts when I need it. That's my dream tractor. Um, Gilbert left us with. John Deere, and if he would have left us with New Holland, I would have used him. I mean, I'm you know honestly not coming from this life. I don't think I had that. You know, this is you know yeah. this is my favorite tractor thing. I didn't I didn't really have it. The John Deeres were great though. I mean, like they do. We've really had hardly any problems. They run super well. Yeah, I mean, but I mean, you're right. If we'd had New Holland's here, we would have ran New Holland's. So. Not guys' tractors. Don't buy guys' tractors. <laughs> yeah, don't buy guy in my yeah he's tractors. Tra he's, he hasn't tried to sell me his tractors yet. Neither one We're of them. We're not buying think. those. <laughs> um, Bill Tire, if the high tunnel plants freeze, will you have to buy seedlings? Um, so if the high tunnel plants freeze, it's just going to be a loss. Um, You're not going to start over. I'm not going to start over. No, because they're all they are cold hardy crops. So broccoli, cauliflower, kale, salanova, lettuce, radishes, spinach, cold hardy crops. Um, I will plant radishes again, um, and I'll plant lettuce, but not salanova lettuce. So if these guys die, um, by the time I could get seedlings, and broccoli and cauliflower and stuff, we all do those again in the summer, and kale. But yeah, if these guys die, then we'll just move into summer planting, and I'll start. I've got tomatoes and peppers in the basement right now, but we'll start all the other stuff here in a couple weeks. So, right. Yeah, we won't replant. So I'm just going to move on. Um... Any chance for a bar of a song, Aaron? Somebody wants you to sing. No. I sang the Menard song already. Oh, yeah, you did. Good for you. Um, <laughs> about halfway through, I was like, oh, my God, I'm singing. I'm I know. I thought about that, too. I was like, Aaron's singing debut. She's singing on the Internet. Um, you know, at, at some point, you might actually uh, catch a video with song in it. I, we have a couple things in the works. Uh, of you singing. Of, of Aaron, because we have um, some friends in Nashville. <laughs> that uh, might be coming up to the ranch at some point. Oh, uh, um, okay. Keep going. No, I was done. Okay. I'm not. I'm just totally teasing that. Let let later. So, so I've seen this question pop up. I think on Facebook, maybe I don't know something about uh, why don't you take the calves the same as the moms? Uh, oh yeah. Okay. Toba farmer, why do you take the calves different numbers than the cows? That's a good question. Um, first of all, tags cost money, and we end up with a lot of leftover tags every year for some weird reason. Um, so we try to use those. I keep well enough, good enough records that I've got it with me all the time that I can always look it up and see who a calf belongs to. And uh, the we have Max program, you can input who the calf is. Right. Um, we've actually tried to do the, the, the cow and the calf number 
um, thing. You have to carry, like, our cows go all the way up to, because you don't, we don't, we bought tags up to, like, 250 or something, right. so we just keep going through them, because most of the time the cows lose their tags, so, like, when we sell, we cut them when we sell the cows, but there's never two of them, mm -hmm. or rarely, so, like, we just keep going, um, so you'd have to buy tags every year. You'd have to buy such a huge array of numbers, and you'd have to carry them all you with you. You have to carry them with you, and then you have to sort through them. So you roll up to cow number 164, and now you got to sort through all these tags and find number 164, all the while she's getting more upset with you because you're standing there messing with her calf. And, um, yeah, it's just easier for me. I mean, there and people do it. I've seen Plenty of people do it. Mm -hmm. I've seen people use the blank tags and they can write, write the them. number on. I mean, that's a great way to do it if you wanna if you wanna match up numbers. Um, great way to do it. So hey, why don't we have buffalo? Why don't we have buffalo? Because they're they're uh, actually they're not, not much of a pain from what I there's there's a buffalo. There might ranch be a buffalo video there. coming. There might be. I, I've kind of been working on this for a while. Um, insider scoop. Um, <laughs> I've been there's a buffalo ranch uh, 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 worldwide. Are they worldwide? I don't know. I don't know. They're, they're a huge um, corporation that owns a ton of buffalo ranches all over the United States. They own one close by here. And uh, I've been working with them, and hopefully um, we'll be able to get you out to a buffalo ranch um, to be able to see the differences between a cow and a buffalo and the infrastructure that you need and the fences you need and the cattle guards you need and, you know, all that kind of stuff because uh, they're, they're a little bit different to work with and a little bit different to run. So. Yeah. So that hopefully that'll be coming at some point too. We do have some cool things coming up. We just got to get all all of our ducks in a row. We have a lot of stuff working on. We do have a lot of like weird little projects that are going on in the in the sides that in the sidelines that just we we're waiting for one more click and then we're done and then we can work on you know be able to make it happen. Um, so I did promise you guys we had a calf um, that was born here oh, yeah, just a little while ago. Okay, um, we need to wrap this up because the kids need to go to bed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, we, we had a calf that was born. We were actually setting up, and I checked on her, and she was getting ready to calf. Um, and then I looked out the window, and boom, she was calving. So this is number 99. Um, oh, you are such a stickler for this stuff. Um, 99 um, is um, Kenzie's. Kenzie's calf. And I don't know if anybody can hear me because it's so loud. Um, McKen this is for Mackenzie's first calf of the year. Um, she had just had the calf. She was not too happy about me there messing with it. I mean, she's she's and, stomping the ground and everything. Yeah, she's not very happy about it at all. Now, I had this bright idea that I was going to set the camera here on the fender of the gator and be able to get the video of me tagging the calf. Um, you'll see how well that worked for me. Um, I jumped out, and, and she was actually, she was all show, really. She didn't have that much, you know, go in her. Um, so we were able to... Um, this is great video. Isn't that awesome? <laughs> this is what you get when, when we're, you know, this is like raw footage right here. Um, <laughs> did manage to get the, the calf tagged, which you'll see right now. Nope, that's the mom. There she is. And uh, it's a little heifer. Uh -huh. And then I left them alone. And you can see the big giant storm brewing in the background there. So um, that's the end of that story. But they're doing okay. We can actually see them almost from where we're sitting if we had a, if we had a, window. If we had a window right there um but yeah they're doing just fine so that is kenzie's first calf of the season didn't her heifer have a calf already no that's oh, that's, that's elsa. uh elsa is her calf it's out there <laughs> her her is. Heifer. has elsa had a baby yet <laughs> you get to hear that all the time um let's run through just a couple more questions that we're gonna have to knock off because we still have to go i have to go check that calf number one um, we have to... We have to put low covers on the plants, and we have to get the kids to bed. And we have to get, get the kids to bed. So, there, yeah, there's still stuff to do. It never shuts off around here. Um, somebody asked about my schedule. Uh, really, I would... We'll go do all this. Then we'll come home. We'll put kids to bed. Um, Aaron and I will hang out for a little bit. I'll go check cows about 10. I'll come back in. I'll go to sleep until 2. I'll go check cows. I'll probably get to sleep I'll about... wake him up about 2.20. Did you go outside? Yeah, she does that, too. Um... <laughs> If I haven't yet, then she's like, get out, yeah, go. Uh, so I'll go check cows again. That'll keep me up for, um, depends on what's going on, but maybe half an hour, 45 minutes. I'll come back. I'll try to crash until about five or so and then manage to get back out. So that's kind of how my my nights run. Um, sometimes I get a nap in the afternoon, which is kind of nice. Depends on what's going on. But Not lately. Not lately. No. Maybe tomorrow. 
Um, no, we have not uh, ever kept our own bull calf back, mostly for uh, the inbreeding thing we don't really want to mess around with, but it would be interesting to keep a, a bull calf back and then be able to sell it if somebody was interested in buying it. Maybe someday. That might happen. All right. Uh, would be interesting to see a video on some Wyoming local history, such as your take on Tom Horn. Uh, when was your ranch first settled? We talked a little bit about this in uh, uh, the Cattle Facts video because I did a little bit of history okay. in the very beginning about. Um, I'm tired. Are you really? Yeah. <laughs> um, but I am. I'm going to try to work with some local historians and see if we can figure some stuff out because there is some cool stuff. There's a battlefield that's supposedly on the ranch where people have found cannonballs. Um, that kind of thing that's uh, right here on the ranch that I've heard about. Um, there's some homesteads that are here. Uh, they used to bring um, cattle through the ranch uh, when they were moving them north and south from Texas. Uh, there's a place called the Bone Pile, which is where they would stop and get water, and apparently they half of them died. I don't know why they call it Bone Pile, because it's just a pile of dead cows. Um, but, uh, yeah, so there's, there's all kinds of interesting things that happened around here. And the Johnson County War, which didn't happen here, but supposedly something happened here that had to do with it. Um, somebody ran from it and came here or something. There's all kinds of weird stuff that I don't know anything about, and I need to find out. And that's why I'm going to talk to a historian and not Wikipedia. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So. Thank uh, you, guys. Yes, thank you very much. We are going to hang it up. Uh, we have tons more still on the way. Uh, obviously we're What's still... What's your video about? I honestly have no idea. We have this conversation at every single live stream. What's your video going to be about? I don't know. I It's mm -hmm. kind of... We do this on the off the cuff sometimes. Uh, usually our project list video is filmed the day that, that it comes out. I mean, you can... You did film on Monday. So. I filmed a little bit on Monday for this Tuesday. last one. And then Tuesday. Uh, but... Yeah, we uh, we we uh, we kind of we kind of play things fast and loose around here so that we can keep you in the loop of what's actually going on. I think that if we film stuff, you know, three weeks in advance, it would. Just... I did film printing apple trees, and depending on the camera angle, you can see the intact high tunnel. Yeah, yeah that might throw. <laughs> but I did on. do that on Tuesday. Yeah. Uh, so, so I mean, there's there's it's 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 yeah. This weekend, I don't know. We could talk. We could. We do always anything. say we're going to get ahead. <laughs> Never do. Although I'm ahead. My next video is already no, it's not. Filmed. It's not done. It's not done. You haven't written. Yeah, you don't, you don't have anything written. Um, you, you haven't filmed, so that's good. Yeah. So anyway, we're, uh, we obviously invite you to subscribe. If you haven't subscribed, I imagine everybody that's went through to this point is probably subscribed. But um, please subscribe to our channel. Tell your friends. Share it. Do whatever you have to do. We're looking to uh, just break 25,000 subscribers, hopefully here within Soon. the next uh, couple weeks. And uh, things are growing and we're ha things are happening. So head over to Facebook. You can like us there as well as Instagram. You can support us on Patreon. Thanks to everybody who uh, hit us up with the Super Chats tonight. That thank was you, awesome. Thank you. And, of course, thank you to our moderators. We had uh, Nash Guy here with us. Ron, of course, is here with us. Matt and uh, Blake was here for a while, but I don't know where he went. I haven't seen him for a while. Is Blake very, still here? He wasn't very chatty tonight. He wasn't very chatty. So, All right. Anyway, Thank you guys. Uh, thanks guys for coming out tonight. If uh, you do have any more questions, of course, we're going to post this back on the replay. Uh, okay. You can you can comment on there. You can send us an email, and you can hit us up on Facebook as well. So have a great night, and uh, we're heading back to work. Thanks for joining us in our Wyoming life.